Man, we back at the lake today. Overcast, fall weather. Woo, what I'm talking about, boy. I'm gonna bet your crappy bite is on fire. Fire. Man, I love the fall. Crappy get more aggressive. Uh, so it is the latter part of September. I always tell you when it was. Let me tell you what I did the last time I was down here. First time I ever done it in my life. Left the plug out of the boat. Yup, I said it. Did not check it. Normally I'll reach down and check it. Mine's a screw plug. Don't even remember loosening it up. Sometimes if we get in really bad storms at the house, rain will blow under my shed sometimes. And you comment below if this happened to you. The rain will blow up under the shed and get in the boat. And then there's always some water in there. I don't keep a cover on it because it sweats so bad. Anyway, that is the only reason I think I may have loosened it, uh, just for that reason. But anyway, got in the boat, automatic bilge pump come on. I'm thinking, what the world? You know what I mean? Why is that thing pumping? That thing just kept on running. Raised the back deck lid up where the batteries were. I looked down in there and I could see the water coming. Fortunately, on this low boat, it is a short reach down in the water to put that plug back in. Anyway, like I said, you can comment below if that ever happened to you. But anyway, good thing I seen it at the boat ramp, right? Hey guys, we're gonna get down to the lake. We're gonna check some uh, deeper brush. We're gonna also check shallow to see if any of these crappy have moved up shallow. I'm assuming the last time I was here, so the last time I was here, shad had really begun to stack up right here. Look at the shad right here. That's shad. That is in the mouth of a cove. They're really beginning to stack up. Wow. Uh, that tells me that a lot of the fish probably are moving back up towards the creek. Getting ready for fall. Hey guys, stay with me. Hey, let's go get it, baby. Let's go get it. See, we got a taker, that's a good one. Probably 10 and a half, 11 inches long. See if we can get that out. That's it. He got spring wrap. Good gracious. I know where they do that. That's that. Not quite sure what that color's called. It was already on. I didn't look. That's about a 11 inch crappy there. Now you notice, I bent that hook trying to get it out too. Should have used my pliers. Now, while I straighten this up, I'm gonna point this out. You know, one of the reasons I like a doubled rig jig, it gives them two colors. Now, if you'll notice, I had that yellow on the bottom and that bluish tint on the top. And he chose the blue, he went to the top and hit it. So that is just one particular reason I like a double rig jig. Plus the other reason is I'm fishing fairly deep right now. Uh, so that fish came out of about 20 feet of water, holding on a underwater hump with a little bit of structure, not a lot. So the double rig jig gives me the ability to get down to them pretty quickly and to give them two bait colors. So if I happen to notice they're hitting the blues a little better than the yellows or the browns, then a lot of times I'll switch, uh, I'll switch to that color. So hey, let's go catch another fish. I got some fish here that are up in the water column and I'm going to tell you what they did. When I first got here, uh, you know, just boom, just like that, boom. What I'm talking about, baby, boom, come on up here. Good gracious. Now see, what did he hit? Look, right back at that yellow. Now this... This yellow here, that looks like the creamy with the chartreuse tail there. 
but banana, like a banana pepper. But boom, good crappy right there. Turn him back loose. Now let me get y'all's opinion on turning fish right back. Now I know walking on water, he fishes a lot of Harris and Jordan. He'll put his fish in a basket, whether he's gonna keep them or not. Because he claims that that affects the fish when they go back, uh, makes them not bite. I've never tried it, so I can't really say definitively if that happens or not. But I'm aiming to try that just to see. See if we can get this one up. Ah, uh, he ain't that big. You know, uh, I switched over those small baits on. Hit that shad color. Just a small fish, about nine inches, maybe nine and a quarter. I'm gonna switch a color. I'm gonna put that slice color on. See if that makes a difference in this cloudy day. Looking for, what I'm looking for is something that they have a reaction to. So if you have live scope uh, and you watch fish come down, some colors that look, when you throw them in the water, some colors, as they come down, you see more activity from the fish. It's like they can see it better, or they're more interested in it. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a color that really piques their interest because if their interest is really piqued, they're more than likely to bite. I hope that makes sense. So let's change these colors. Oh yeah, an old champ boy, she said, champ rocking the day, baby. Champ rocking the day, a boom. And I'm telling you, boy, they are eating these lures too, boy. You can tell when crappy, get that lure way down in their mouth. They are aiming. They ain't playing with the lure, they are eating it. Good crappy, good crappy. Now you notice this dock behind me has got the boards all the way down. There's one board missing over here and I'm having to throw back under that one right there at an angle to catch these fish. You got him out from under there. A uh, boom. Come on out from under there, big boy. And put another knife from under there. Get gracious. And then pull another one out. Thank you, Mr. Fish. Tell you what, let's go on to the next dock, y'all. I think I'm going across some braces back there. There he is. Oh, he's around the brace back there, y'all. There he comes. Come on out here and don't be camera shy. See us. That's a good crappy. Another one on that champ color, y'all. The champ color's been a good color. Ah, uh, boom. So as you can see here, it says the water's four foot deep, but it's deeper than that. I don't know why it says that. I'm gonna keep a rod tip up. Uh, I got bit. And I'm over a brace. Might lose it. Nope, he came over it. Can't get that thing under there. Come on out here and see us. There's just like that right there. Up out of there. A uh, boom. That's what I'm talking about. All 
right, we'll get it back under there again. Seems to be if I can get it under there, I can catch a fish. There's another one. A uh, boom. Oh yeah, that's a good one right there. Come on up there. Boy, he swallowed that thing. Good gracious. Look down in there. He swallowed that thing. Hmm. It's a good crappy right there. You know, dock fishing is all about the angle and being able to get to the fish. You know, fortunately, water's down a little bit and I'm able to get underneath this dock. You know, and if you hunt around, a lot of people don't like to fish docks just for a simple reason. You get hung a lot. Oh, that's just the simple truth of it. But I get hung in brush piles too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you fish a couple of docks, you'll kind of learn where those braces are and you can stay away from them and you can catch some good sized crappy. This dock has been good to me so far. Get in that hole right there. Let's see if we can slide one back underneath there. That was pretty good. You notice how I pull the line back and give it a little slack. Oh, look at that. Uh-oh, he hung around one of them braces. Good gracious, come on down one of the, uh-oh. He's a wild one. He's a good crappy, I can see him right there. Come on out of here, big boy. Good gracious, he's all around that post. Now that joker right there is eating. I'll tell you why. Look how far he's got that LC shad down there in his mouth. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Boom. Good fish right there. 